Hey, 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 everybody. If you're here, welcome. Uh, and if you are, please let me know in the comments so I can validate you to the world. Uh, what am I doing? I'm doing something very wrong. Here we go. Okay. All right, you guys. So anyway, I need to start to finish a few of these things, these sessions that I have. Um. And anyway, who works in Capture One Pro? I do. I worked in Lightroom for for years, and uh, changing over to Capture One was fun. It was neat. Like everything else, you need to get used to different things. But I love my process now. Can I show you my one of my processes that I love the most? Honestly, let me show you this album. Can I do a slideshow in here? I can. Oh, it won't just play? Yeah, it will. Okay. So anyway, I'm going to let this roll while some of y'all are coming on board. So if you're like me, if you're in business and you're taking care of clients with digital images, um, you know, you need to give sometimes different sizes. And I give my brides two folders. One is their full res large JPEGs and a Facebook folder. So it's Facebook sized images with my logo on them. That way any web sharing they're doing, they just pull from that folder and my logo's on there and it makes life a lot easier. For my regular portrait clients, um, we I don't really offer f large resolution files normally because that's why you're coming to me. Um, I'm going to take care of your wall. I'm going to take care of your albums and your books. Um, 8 by 10s and smaller, you can purchase those. Um, not to eat my words a little bit, but we I did just make a price for the full resolution files. It's just a good bit more. Um, so anyway, what I love about Capture One is that they have recipes, which is like actions on Photoshop and I love how I can just click what I need and it'll do it. Let me, let me show you something. Let me get out of this. So watch this. Let's take this row. We're going to come up here. Here's your process recipes. They have a few um, defaulted actions in here that they're all already going to be in here and just so you know this one right here that says quick proof preview size this thing's awesome it, it's it's straight up awesome for you as a photographer yourself to post on your own website or Facebook that size file is a low res at a larger size that happens to work perfectly if that makes any sense uh, and it's super small so it looks good online but it's small but uh, this is what I like about the recipes. So I'm gonna do, watch this, I'm gonna do a quick proof because let's say some of these images eventually I wanna put her, which I need to actually, um, let's do all of these. I do need to put her on my actual website because this little session was super fun and cute and she's adorable uh, and I love her parents, they're awesome. So quick proof for me large jpeg also for me because that's, that's the final images i need to store them okay so i'm going to order everything from but i also want printable up to 8 by 10 size and i want a facebook folder now i have all these recipes designed to go into the one main folder that you're actually in or where you're going to export to so i have a folder on my desktop called developed developing your ross and whatever you name it here is going to be the main folder in that folder. 
So this is uh, Mia everywhere. So I am going to hit process. Check this out. Minute 30. I love this 8 core MacBook Pro. It's so fast. So it's going to do this. And those four things that I clicked on are going to have their own folders and everything's all on the inside. We're ready to rock. So the Facebook images have my logo. 8x10 size does not. Large does not. And the quick proofs, I think if the quick proofs, I don't think they do. I think I have to keep reminding myself that if I want the logo on there, watermark, none. Yeah, I have to keep reminding myself that if I want the watermark on those images, I have to go turn that on. So it's not on either. Capture one live stream happening now on YouTube. All right, let me get back. Okay. Okay, so look, that's done. Sorry, I had to do something to this screen over here. Look, desktop developed right here. There's my develop folder. So when I work on a client, I have a raw folder where I dump all their raws to. Um, all of these raws get deleted. Everything gets deleted off my laptop, but I have a raw external drive, which those get copied to. I leave them on my laptop. That way I can just grab my laptop, go somewhere, Everything's on my laptop to develop. Once I'm done developing them and they're online and they came in for their sales session, they've seen everything. Um, everything is on the two extra drives. My online is, my online viewing is also my server. So that's my third backup over there. Then things get deleted off of the laptop. So let's go to develop. Here is Mia everywhere. Look, folders, 8 by 10 Facebook, large, quick proof. So check it out. Facebook images, have my logo down here. Boom, bottom right. So everything in the Facebook folder is ready to be shared everywhere. Here's my up to 8 by 10 size. So these are literally eight by 10 at 250, which is great. So if you try to send this file to uh, someplace online to make a 16 by 20 or larger, it's not gonna work. Hey, give me a second. My battery on my Canon camera, which is my live camera, just battery just died. Give me a second.
All right, you guys, hold on. Let me see what's going on here. Why is it not seeing anything? Stuart, hey dude, I'm locked in and watching, just so you know, good hold, I know, uh, it's my fault, man, Canon batteries are awesome, actually, and apparently, I'm having an issue, just, just give me one little second, because, um, I do have some things I want to talk about, I'm gonna let you look at this shot real quick, while I'm getting my batteries done, People always ask me if Fuji is sharp. They always ask me, does it handle... People hear too many things. And they, I keep telling people, just go rent the camera you're considering buying, dude. You want to buy a Sony? Go rent it first. You want a Canon? Go rent it first. Fuji, go rent it first. That way, when you fall in love with it, you feel really good about your purchase. Um, this image was, hey, go down about 50 feet, turn around, grab your dress, run back to me, I put it on continuous shutter, continuous focus, and I just held the button down. And uh, this is an electronic shutter too, not mechanical. And look at that face, bam, bam. Right, give me a second. All right, hold on. I should be good. Come on. All right, hold on. I need to get to this thing. Come on. Where are you? Oh, Stuart, how you doing, man? I just saw you post on the page talking about your Fringer adapter issues. Um... I did update the Fuji X-T3, and I want to say I'm getting some glitching on my 85 1.8 as well. It's almost like Canon knew what the Fringer was able to do, and I don't know. So I think somebody made an update that's not having a handshake with the other piece of hardware, and that's why we're all having some glitches. It's kind of like your iPhone getting outdated. They just stop giving you updates. So you slowly get out of the system and have to buy a new product. <laughs> uh, I wonder if that is the same thing. Um, come on, Canon Utility. It's all about the Canon. The Canon. Try this one more chance, Stuart. I'm sorry. Zone or tracking or face for the focus. On the shot I just showed you? Uh, good question. No, it's probably just a zone. Zone, put it on the eyes. I like to throw my camera off kilter. I'm, I'm sitting there showing you as if the camera's working. The camera's not working. Hold on. Why is the camera not talking? How come this always happens when you're on a live? This is the weirdest thing ever. But that was just a square zone. Put it on face detect. Continuous, continuous shutter. Squeeze.
Okay. Huh? All right. Cool. So, you see what I'm trying to do here? Huh? You can see on the main screen. I don't want to do that. No. Go away. I'm so confused, dude. I just had you on. I just turned you off. Okay, hold on. Let's quit that. Turn the camera off. It's like rebooting, right? Alright, let me show you another shot. Just to kind of show you. I'm telling you, man, all, all these are money. They're just straight up money. And I work pretty quick. I, I, I like to, I don't know why, I'm so used to working fast because of events. We're always under, under a time constraint, it seems like. So I'm kind of used to working kind of quick and moving on. So I call it stick and move. Get the shot. Get a second shot, third shot. All right, let's move. And uh, I like to do that. It makes my variety and my session happen quickly. And honestly, I can, the, the funny part is, the images you're looking at right now were her faves for her 8x8 book that she purchased after seeing these. Um, I, I can show you all of them. This is all of them. Okay. Um, what I was going to say was this was my mini session, quote unquote. But downtown New Orleans has so many awesome textures and colors within a two, three block radius. In the 30 minutes that I gave them, we did it an entire session. Easy. I mean, really, really easy. Um, this is bumming me out. Come on, Cannon, talk. Why do I feel like it's something weird, something strange? All right, Steve, I'm not going to lie. This is a bit embarrassing, dude, because I don't know what the heck is going on. Why you got a pair when it's connected? Like, connected, meaning I have a USB cable to its thingy. Connected. We're not, I don't want to do this over Wi-Fi. Good lord. I'll be honest, I've never had this problem before. Hold on. <sighs> oh man, this is hard. This is so difficult. I don't know, know what to do. Uh, Steve, I'm going to have to do this blind, meaning you can't see me. But let me let me show you some things that I'm working on. Uh, it's more important than you see in my face anyway. Hey, if you're still here, let me know in the comments. All right, so I have a raw folder. This I need to look at. That's me with the text. So how is your day today, Steward? If you're still here. If anybody is here, let me know in the comments so I can give you a shout out. And let me get my frozen face off of the screen. Here we go. <laughs> okay. Still, we're still here. Okay. All right, bud. It is. Give you a heads up. It's ten minutes to three. So I'll do a good. I'll do a good thirty minutes. 
with this and, and please ask me any questions you may have um, I'm, I'm happy to show you whatever I can um, I'm not gonna cull in front of you because it's yeah look this is a lot of shots it's a lot of images I'm, I'm not gonna cull in front of you that's what takes so darn long but what I like to do is this so you see how I have a grouping of all the girls outside okay um, that scenario that lighting has not changed so this this is the original now this laptop is running the live stream it's running capture one it's running a second monitor so as good as the eight core is and the RAM is up there it still needs a few seconds and then it like snaps into clarity so this is the original image. This is me doing a color balance on it. So all I would do for the color balance, let me, let me go back to this one. First things first, I hit the automatic wand. I just want to see where Capture One gets me. It looks like that's where it got me. Look at that. Capture One for me has better color algorithms than at the time, at the time, then Lightroom did. My Canon images were looking better in Capture One than they were in Lightroom. Um, so when I went Fuji, I was like, let me do the trial with Capture One. I did th the 30 days, and I, I was addicted. Um, were, he, were you here a second ago when I explained the, um, the process recipes? Well, let me know if you were here. So anyway, what I was going to say was, so this color I like, okay? Um, even the, the crop, you know, they were on an angle a little bit. I mean, I was shooting them on an angle, so that line behind us is not gonna be perfect. Um, so I am gonna command shift C. I'm gonna copy that. Now I'm gonna hold my shift key down, click the last image. So all of these are selected. Command shift V is in Victor to paste. Now they all have the exact same color balance. So now I'll usually go back, crop, um, make something straight if I have to, like like this shot. Like I don't need both of these. This is where the culling process would, would come in. You know, like like let me show you something. This I can do for you real quick. Obviously, you're not going to show all these. I need one. That's all I need is one. They will never see all the images. So how do they know? They don't know what they're missing because I'm not going to show them. So that's cute. I want to see some actual emotion. I think the first one's probably the best. I like her smile the best. You know, it's all about the bride. So these other ones. Um, not a, I love her smile here, but... Mm, eh. Okay, well, there you go. So I would make that a five star. Crop this more straight for them. And we're golden. And the other ones, I would not five star. When you're saying five star, what are you talking about? Well, when you go to the little folder thingy over here, scroll down to your ratings and click on your ratings and you'll see just the ones you did a five on. So these are my faves. So far, I just went through the the wedding I wanted to see. Look at this shot. Isn't that cool? Uh, this one I love. That's a cathedral length fail. That's awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Uh, check out the cake. So, give you a little hint. I have been working with LED lights for the past couple of jobs now. Um, there's this little, again, if the camera was working, I can show you, but it's a credit card size LED, like a little aperture. Uh-oh. Give me one second.
Okay, sorry. Um, so who's still here? If you're here, let me know in the uh, in the comment section if you can. Ooh, wait! You just said the sound was muted. Wait a second, that's telling me. Hold on, you're not getting the good audio. Are you hearing that now? You should be hearing this microphone. That looks like it's peeking out. Hold on. How's that? Is that any better? You're not supposed to be able to hear through my laptop mic. I did mute the laptop just in case. Interesting. All right. Well, either way, you, you're definitely getting me somehow now. Um, so anyway, I've been working with LEDs a lot. My second photographer, Titus, he's awesome, man. He's a really good friend of mine. He has a larger, like the size of your hand, size panel light. And he'll just raise it up with his arm and feather across people. And he's a photographer too, so when I tell him to feather, he knows what that means, which is nice. So I love this so much. I love that light coming across their faces, and I swear this is only lit by two lights. Titus, let me show you something. If you, can you watch my, watch my arrow? So Titus is standing over here somewhere. Whoops, sorry. It will let me do it. He's over there, and right by the flowers. I was gonna say it. This is him right here. I'm not sure if that is. Right behind the flowers, he's up in 45 over. Okay, because you can look at the shadows and see where the light is on an angle of. Then I have that little credit card size light on my camera that I turn it on. It just came on as soon as you sent the message. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> um, so what you're seeing in the front, the this light hitting this nice and evenly, is that little credit card size aperture LED on my camera so it's flat but it's soft okay he is my accent light actually that worked out so good I was very concerned about all these girls but you know you're the photographer you're the pro you're the director so when one of the girls was not being lit correctly I'm like hey brunette in the back you yeah beautiful come closer like three inches three inches get in here girl and as soon as I knew everybody was in the light, snap, snap, snap. Pretty cool, huh? Um, so let me let me show you. I'll show you before and after. I'm trying to find a shot. Oh, it's on my fives. That's why. So anyway, let me go ahead and hit the auto on this because that's the file out of the camera. This is what sometimes happens, especially in lower light stuff. It just wants to open everything up. Don't know why. I wish somebody would tell Lightroom and Capture One, hey, you should have an auto setting for indoor pictures. <laughs> anyway, that's all I had to do. I did the auto, and then I brought the exposure down a little bit. I didn't touch anything else. You're, you're my witness. I'll tell you what, I don't think I will do is bring shadows up a little more my contrast is at negative one what if we go up just a pinch 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 and then and i already did the other image so i don't even need this shot but just to show you boom pretty cool not too shabby all right so that's inside work uh, what else can I show you? Let me go back up here. So the band, due to COVID, they had to play on the balcony while the PA and everything, the speakers, were inside the building. So everybody had the entire dance floor to rock, which was fun. And this is why I love the Fuji, man. Put it on the face detection. Just crop. Look how much of the image I'm actually letting go of. 
them. It'll look fine. Love. Um, anyway, questions, questions, Stuart, anybody who's here, if you have a question, please. Doesn't have to be about Capture One, just raw converting in general. Um, and when people say, why do you shoot raws? Just shoot JPEGs. You know why? This as a JPEG would be destroyed. There's hardly any detail in the whites. Now, it's probably still very much destroyed as the raws, but look what you can do with the raw that you cannot do with a JPEG. And, you know, you're working fast on events. We do try to be as perfect as we can, but we're human, and our fingers like to press that button often, and I can only control so much. So if this is, if this is the 1% of an image that's not perfect, one, I'll take it. Two, look at that. Here's my highlights. I'll bring my highlights. Okay, so this will be part of my lesson today. Your highlights. You have white, you have highlight, and you have brightness. And you're sitting and going, what the heck is the difference? Okay. Here's highlights back to close to zero. Let's put it on zero. Okay? It's close enough. The highlights... The, the highlight is the white blown out area like your sky in this case it's the overexposed part you know my f-stop was wrong see that was 2.8 125 whatever I did I was on the cake setting and I turned to shoot this and I was just off I shoot everything on manual on the camera by the way but when you bring your highlight down on your high dynamic range area it just brings down the actual blown out highlights then I'll come over to the whites. Now, the white really does affect just white. So the first thing I do is go up, like raise it, so I can see what is it, what is it affecting. And then when I bring it all the way down. And I don't want muddy, so where's my happy medium? So here's all the way up. I'm kind of fine with up, honestly. All right, so stop. Let's go to brightness. Brightness is usually the entire image. So up here in the exposure panel is to the entire image. Remember that. All of this is the entire image. So, watch this. Let's bring the brightness. I don't need it too dark. Let's leave it there. Contrast, let's bring it down a little bit. That'll help even out that difference of contrast in them in the back. Now, watch this. This is huge. Huge. It's going to be huge. Uh, high dynamic range. Shadows. And your blacks. There's a difference here. Because this, these guys affect individual items of your image. Shadow is kind of like raising your mids all the way. So shadow affects the entire image, right? Everything. I mean, everything. The entire room, the girls, the dress, everything. It's the whole image. So let's bring that back down to where we're happy. Um, a lot of times your shadow is where you're losing your blacks. But watch this. Blacks. That was just the black. Everything that's dark, everything that's blackish. Notice the wall on the back is not as bright as it was before when I did the shadow. Okay? So you can just do the blacks if you want without doing the shadows. Pretty cool, right? So look, watch the face. Watch the face and the dress in the front as I'm bringing just the blacks up and down. Now watch this shadows it's everything interesting isn't it all right give me a raise your hand if you're here do dot 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 in the comment section or anything so i know that you're here did, did that help anybody so this is before this would be your jpeg that's blown and you cannot fix this as a jpeg you're not getting skin tones back from this as a JPEG. So my Fuji camera, I shoot two cards. One is raw, one is JPEG. And the only reason why is because... I don't know why, honestly. <laughs> I could probably just do two raws. But 
it's easier with the JPEGs because I get more images on that card. I kind of consider my JPEG card like my backup card. But this is because we shoot raw. That's if you were only JPEG. Pretty cool. All right. Uh, all right. So this is the only time lately I've been using the external flash. You see this umbrella right here? That's my other strobe, my regular Canon strobe. The um, 550EX2 or whatever. That's up there. It has the Godox bottom base. So the other parts on top of the Fuji and they talk just fine. But that's when I also like using this. I do like using flash at receptions, but I've been going out of town lately for jobs. I can't bring that second light. And the more the more minimal I work, the more I'm loving that workflow. I'm loving the minimalist. And you know, just because you can do certain things just because you know how to do everything doesn't mean you should. Cool. So what was this? 16 millimeter? Now keep in mind, this is the X-T3, so it's not stabilized. 16 miller, 16 miller. Millimeter at 5.6, 60th of a second, and you, you're going to laugh because, yes, this was at 3,200 speed. People freak out when I tell them what ISOs sometimes that we shoot at. They're like, 3,200? Are you insane? I was like, dude, do this. Take your camera, click ISO, go up all the way. What is your highest ISO? Okay, I think the Fuji is what? 12,800. These cameras are designed to push the ISO. Okay? So tell yourself that the highest range you should be going with good looking images is half of what your largest ISO is. So that means 6,000 is my max. Okay? Me shooting at 3,200 is still half of your max. And the worst thing for any high ISO, high ISO image is not enough light. Any camera. doesn't matter what you're shooting. If you don't have enough light, you're going to introduce digital noise and grain a lot easier and more obvious than if you have good light. This is good light. This is me handheld. This is handheld, bro. Dude. This is why I can't wait to get my X-T4 as soon as I sell my X-T3. Just to know that the stabilization is always going to be there rather than when I put my 16 mil on. I know it's not, but that's impressive. Impressive. 5.6. Everybody's like, how can you get away with that? It's like, remember, whatever you're focusing on, you have a... Uh, before depth of field and you have an after depth of field so depending on where people are posed will depend on the f-stop that should work for you best so who's here right now Stuart are you still here dude I feel like I want to do something just for you like like what do you want to see All right, here's one I can show you. All right, this is just, uh, these, these are the readers, but, oh, I like this shot a lot. Okay, hold on, I like this shot when they're all working it. You know, brides will, will tell you, man, if they, if they have a cathedral length veil, they love this shot because it emphasizes how long the veil is. I mean, come on, that is beautiful. So let's do the old uh, auto everything. Colors, not too, too bad. Contrast is low. Let's crank that. Let's crank this down. You see how the blacks are lost on this? 
Let's take just the blacks. And just the blacks are gonna go up, not everything. Let's bring, let's go down about 2,800 or so on the color. Yeah. Let's crop this. Let's crop it straight. Hey, does, any, does anybody know if Capture One has an auto align feature that I'm not finding? It's the only thing I do miss in Lightroom. Stuart, do you use. Um, no, I don't actually. Or just guess a rough f stop for group shots. No, I've been doing this for too long, man. I got 26 years of, of doing this, and you, you get in the habit. You know, the safe, the super safe number all the time, honestly, when doing groups is F8. It's the middle, it's the middle of everything. It's, um, it's the middle of all of your F-stop range. It's the middle of what your focal plane will give you according to what your eyes see, if that makes any sense. So as you go to a smaller f-stop beyond f8, like 16 or 22, now you're going beyond your normal sight because your eyes will not see everything in focus all at one time. That's not how our eyes work. Um, so consider f8 is middle of the lens. As you see it, it's going to be great. Um, if you have a large group, like a convention you're shooting and there's a hundred plus people up there, that's when F8, F10, or 11 is the best. Just get your lights in the air, crank it, make sure it looks good, and then adjust your f-stop according to your light. Um, weddings? You know, you're doing family groups. Um, let me go back down. Like, okay, so this is a 4 all right. Now, remember, your focal plane is this line up and down and this bar right across. So if, if you can understand this with me, where the bride and groom's nose is, okay, we always try to lean him in a little bit more to her is because it puts his eyes close to the same focal plane as hers. That'll make them both super sharp. All you have to do is make sure that people on the sides of them or standing or posed in, the, in an area that it's close to their focal plane. So the bride and groom is your standard. If that's your baseline of where your focus is going to be, and then you pose everybody else to them. So I can get away with that four. I could have shot this at two eight, and they would have been in focus. Um, as you add people again, they're on that same line, right? So what you need to worry about is when they go beyond this line and they come forward or people are behind them. The before and behind is where your f-stops make a big difference. If they're on the same plane, you can get away with 3.5, even 2.8 sometimes. Four is being safe, and I gotta be safe. Um, when you get to the groups, see, he is by her flowers. He's almost in, well. He's in front of her flowers, actually. So that is what almost a foot difference. And there's nobody behind him. So that's how I see things all day long. I just have this experience of working jobs, and I can't help it. I, I'm just so used to looking. Uh, I don't see this line. What I'm concerned about is the somebody standing here or somebody standing here like that. I got to make sure my f-stop is small enough. That deserves an F11. You know, get your light closer if you need to. Rock it. Here's auto. Let's bring the exposure down. I don't know why it blows exposure out so much, but it does color really well. It does contrast really well. They look a little red in the face to me. So let's add a little more yellow and take away some red. And notice my saturation is minus 20. So that's lack of saturation. So look how much beautiful color is in these Fuji files, man. I'm taking out color and they're still on point. I get so many questions, man. People are, I don't know what it is. You know, it's 
people hear from their buddies or people they follow, they hear opinions, and they think that's it. Unknown caller. Unknown caller. I have an automatic message that I pressed that says, hello. This is GK. I'm in a session right now. However, I can text. How can I help you? If it's a robocaller, they don't leave messages. If it's a client, they text right back. Oh, no problem. Call me when you're out of your session. I love that. So anyway, what I was saying was, I have so many people telling me that they think Fuji is like third world camera compared to the other name brands. And I'm like, where are you getting this information from? Oh, I heard it here. I read it there. And I'm like, okay, have you ever used a camera? Like, I can't talk about Sony's because I don't own a Sony. I've never even rented a Sony. But I know they're good cameras. But I can't talk technical about them because I don't, I've never used one. So I don't know how people can have opinions about things they never use themselves. And they really do believe that somebody else's review and opinion is enough. Um... I can't go by that, especially when you're looking at spending two, three, four thousand dollars on equipment. Man, rent it first. Rent it first. Rent it first. Alright, I dig that. So everybody's very close to that same focal plane. And where did I shoot this at? 5.6. And the only reason why I got away with the 60s is because that flash was behind me. So I knew that flash would stop any itty bitty movement as possible. Tim C, man, how you been? It's been a while. Ignorance is the answer. Yep. And we've seen that in this election. It is all over the place. So I just stay quiet and to myself. I'm here if you need me kind of thing. So look. Tim C knows this. Tim Tim C, by the way, this guy knows Caption One very well. Okay, you can answer this. Do they have an auto leveling feature button? You know, like Lightroom, you have the auto leveling. It'll and I love that because it'll straighten all of my group shots first, and then I'll just go recrop them. I don't see that feature in Capture One. Does it even exist? And by the way, if you're just joining in, you're not seeing my face because. I don't know what happened. Well, the battery died on my Canon 5D Mark III, which is on me. So no problem. Change batteries. And then something's not connecting with the software. I don't know what's going on. But anyway, lucky for you, you don't have to see my face today. Um, but anyway, if you know of the auto leveling in Capture One, please let me know. It is the only feature I miss from Lightroom. The only feature. Um, so what else can I do? Let me go on to something else. You guys are tired of seeing this one. So look, all right, hold on. So this is my, my buddy Titus. He's still shooting uh, the Canon Mark III. There's another question I get. How do you work with files from different name brands? I'm like, it's called Shoot Raw. And they're like, what do you mean? But he's shooting Canon, you're Fuji. And I'm like, and we're shooting Raw. <laughs> He's like, but they're two different name brands. <laughs> I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. Raw is raw is raw is raw, which means you have complete control of everything in raw. So I can make his color look like my color. And honestly, I just like good color, so I don't do anything different. There's white. I click on white. There's gray. Here's black in the suits. Here, here's your white balance. You know, mid-tones. Find something gray that gives me some reds sometimes. The whites will get it more gold, if you notice. And then the blacks, sometimes it nails it. Sometimes it's like, eh, I kind of like how the whites were right there. Like, that just happens to work. So it's like, sweet. So, command, shift, C for copy. Let's go to all of his guys that were outside. These are all outside, right? Hold your shift key down, go click on an image and all of these are selected. Command, shift, V as in Victor for paste. Booyah. They're all the same color minus these two I see are underexposed. Which is not his fault by any sense of the word. 
Um, you see, he's shooting at 2.2, and he's rocking 640 because he knows. Titus and I work a lot alike as far as we both jump around and move quickly when we work. We can't help it. We're just very high-energy, artistic, loving photography kind of guys, and we have to shoot 250 or higher outside because – Nine out of ten times, the little bit of movement we see in the images were from us moving, not the person. Like, they're not doing anything major right now, you know? But it's nice to know um, that the action has stopped. So, sometimes I'll do whole exposure, like, just tweaking this a little bit. I can see the difference in Canon's files and Fuji's files. So, if you ever notice in your blacks, you have like some greenish kind of thing happening. First of all, they are a little red. So first let's go to the tint and take some red out. But if you notice, it's just making it more green everywhere else. So let's bring this back up to like a 1.5. Usually how that happens is because your shadows are too high. So bring your shadows down a pinch, bring your blacks down a pinch, and that little color goes away. Your neck cool. Saturation. Let's go down a little bit. It's good. It's good. I'm not completely in love, but it's good. It's close. Close enough. Now the problem is, now you go right next to it, you're like, okay. They're not all the same. Like, what is the problem? I blame Canon. I'm kidding. I don't. I'm sure it's me. Um, let's get all of those. Control V. Booyah. There you go. That's why we shoot raw. Tim C. I don't think Capture One yet has an auto level. Why? Don't tell me that's something Adobe trademarked. <laughs> an auto leveling feature. Come on. It's literally the only feature I miss is the auto leveling. Not that auto leveling was perfect either. Let, let's be truthful. You know, you can grab 20 images and say, auto level, please. They're not all going to be straight. I don't, I don't know how the algorithm is supposed to work, but, man, I wish it would work better. All right. Those are all the same color. Oh, check, check this shot out. I love this shot that Titus did. This is my second shooter, Mr. Titus. How he sees things is sometimes different than how I may see things. And I love that because we push each other. So I'll see images like this, and I'll notice the angle he took. So I'm looking for things like this the next time I go to work where I did an angle or a shoot through or something. And he's like, man, I'm going to try that next time. I love that. If you're not working with people that are pushing you to grow as an artist, it's very hard to push yourself to be unique and different. It just is. Um, so watch this. I did this already, but I'm going to show you. Yeah, well, yeah, I I don't like the straighten tool. That's when you click in the line and it, yeah, I, I don't know why. My head can't wrap around the damn straighten tool. I swear my eyes just, watch, I'm going to do it right here. My eyes are looking at all the lines and, like, I can tell. Like, this is crooked. Look at the length of this. Look at, I can tell that's a little crooked. So let's even that to where these lines are straight. That's, that's just how my eyes work. I, I, I see it when I shoot all the time. And it's easier for me to do it that way. Um, but hey, to each his own. Back to what I was saying. Here's the image taking the yellow out. Looks terrible. It, it, doesn't, it lost the effect. The only thing that would make this look good is black and white. My GK black and white, of course. Um, this is a little bright compared to his face. So let's see if we can do something without blowing his shirt out. See, I don't like how... Why is this... Sh that's so weird that just his shirt... All right, hold on. <clears throat> let's... Yeah, hold on. We'll do this. Uh, I will draw a little mask on here. just because I want to bring just the whites down and not the entire thing. 
Um, first things first. All right, so I don't want it gray. I just don't want it blaring white. Okay, so look, let's leave that alone. Let's bring the highlights down. Boom. There you go. Remember, I told you before how the highlights work. Now the, sh the shirt's not glowing at me. I use it for horizons on trees. Yeah, I can see that making. Yeah, you got that nice big line in the background. But this looks like a Looney Tune cartoon image, doesn't it? <laughs> a bitty, a bitty, a bitty. That's all, folks. I love this. I love the color. And sometimes people want to correct everything. Don't I? I mm. And then I see other photographers that I admire. And they'll add warmth or they'll add an off color and it makes that image unique. If you white balance everything perfectly, it, sometimes it's dull. If that makes any sense? Stuart, that backdrop reminds me of Looney Tunes. <laughs> I told you, man. <laughs> you must have typed that. There's a delay of my stream at like a good 30 seconds. So I can never tell if... When your message pops up, is it right when I saw that and you typed it? Or did you type it 30 seconds ago and I'm just seeing it? I don't know. I really think it's real time. Because when I do this, that's what I was thinking. See? When I type this there immediately. I don't think there's, there's a delay on your end. Anyway... I know. I love that, though. I do. Um, so this is my second shooter, man. Titus is, Titus is the man. And look, a lot of these shots that he does, he knows he wanted them in black and white. He knows they're, they're going to be black and whites later. Um, I have two kinds of black and whites. I have this kind of black and white and a flat matte. And uh, the flat matte doesn't always, doesn't always work. I forget what I had to do. Yeah, it's a shadow. Is it a shadow thing? No. Hold on. Is it a black thing? No. What'd I do? I made an adjustment on this. I just can't think of it right now. Oh, well. It looks terrible. All right. I do like in Capture One how you can use multiple presets on top of each other. That's cool. But, yeah, this, this would definitely be a black and white. Love, I mean, come on, watch this. Watch this in black and white. Look how these girls stand out compared to the other ones in black. And you see what I mean by, you know, we work fast. So it's hard to get everything perfectly straight in the camera. But you can totally just do this if you wanted to. Looks like you shot it that way. But I actually like seeing all the big girls because you know that's what they're thinking. You know, these little girls want to be those big, taller girls in front of them so bad. And they're so happy they have dresses on. I have daughters, so I know these things. Trust me, they want to see those girls. They're looking at her going, oh, I wish my hair looked like her. I wish I was as tall as her. So... Titus did a fantastic job. You see, Titus can go up in the loft while I'm downstairs looking. Oh, I love that. I love that. Look, she's touching him. Aw, oh, little dude reading. That's a great shot, man. So this is one of those images that explains what storytelling photography is. What are you showing in the picture for you to read it, basically, you know? When somebody writes a novel, that paragraph where they're describing this sunset that they're seeing by the mountaintops, they have to say it in words that are very well descriptive so you can mentally paint that image in your head. Photographers need to be aware of, hey, the story's already in front of you, but don't, you know, even though that's a cute shot, you don't know why she's doing that. This is why she's doing that. So being aware of all of your surroundings and knowing what to put in frame is how you tell a story. So for you and me, this image is, oh, it's cute, yeah, it's okay. 
for her, she may cry a little bit when she sees this shot because that dude is growing up so fast. And just in a couple of years from now, he's going to be way taller. This little bitty kid is gone. And she knows that. See what I'm saying? I can get Vaclem talking about this stuff. But that's why we do what we do. You see, okay, look, uh, I'm a Tim C. Um, see the lines on the stairs? That's what my eye is using for straightness. I know, I know, I can hear you right now. You're telling me I can do that really quick with the other do, doodad, but uh, I couldn't get used to it. I tried. Wait, I don't need bald head dude on the bottom. There you go. Still crooked. All right, now I gotta look at these lines up and down because the stairs may be at an angle. So you can't go by the stairs. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Okay, well. There must be a 30 second delay on, on everything on my end. So I, I keep looking to see who's writing me back. 3.32. I'm good. I'm going to go a little longer. My session's at 4.30. But I love this. As simple as this shot is, I love that, man. Five star, that sucker. Um, and, and thank you. I'm, I'm glad this is really great stuff. I'm always, I'm always shy on doing a live stream and working on a topic that bores people. And I know people are at a every experience level, but a lot of my subscribers, you know, you guys have a camera and you guys have been doing it for a little bit. You know, everything isn't Greek to you. Um, let's go to something else. What else can I show you? This is my Christmas set. <laughs> I gotta show this off at some point in time. So check it out. You're not gonna believe this, but this is lit completely with LEDs. That Godox 60 SLW. I have two. I don't think I have a behind the scenes to show you. Um, one is over here blasting into the white wall, so the wall becomes the light source back this way. And on this side, over here, I have a softbox that's on a 45. Behind this, I have an LED aiming down a little bit to give me a little bit of rim on those flowers. All LEDs. And you're saying, why not just do flash, dude? Because I love shooting candids with kids, and when they laugh, I like having my shutter jigga 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 jigga, you know, on the continuous low. And uh, you can't pop flashes that fast without destroying your flesh. So lately I've been working strictly with LEDs. It's been a little rough, but now that I'm used to it, I'm loving the shots that I get. Let me show you something. I'm gonna get off the capture one for a second just because I have finished images to show you. Megan, all right, watch this. Let me show you why. why look at this shot, tell me that's not the cutest ever. Look at her. Ma, talk to the hand. <laughs> oh. I'm going to take a sip of my Diet Coke. So, oh, I can go backwards. Good. So this shot on the jigga, 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 was one, two, now I didn't, these are processed files. So I have like five of those in a row. These are the ones that I showed her. But some of these things were happening fairly quick and popping that flash is, um, I can't get as many of these. Like her trying to run away. It's like click, click, click. I love this. Oh, watch this, watch this. How cute is that? Come on. Super duper cute, man. Man, I hit V and this happens. 
Love. Love, 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 love. All LEDs. The day I decided to start trying to do LEDs, I was a little nervous. I mean, I want the best for, for my clients at all times. But at the same time, I know the ratios that I like with my strobes. So the exact same rules apply to your LED source. You still need a brighter light than the other light so it's brighter to give you highlight angles of light are the same you know in theory as flash it's the same rules you're you're just using different equipment so people that are different brand shooters like sony canon whatever you you know film it doesn't matter it's just a tool it is it's just a tool that's what i love about photography so much because you gaining knowledge is always going to improve you, your skills, and if you, in when you're addicted to this wonderful field that we're in, this you know creative field, you never want to stop learning. Um, I'm still learning. I'm always learning. The the vlogs that y'all watch from me, the only way I know how to even do these things, because I'm not a videographer. Um, it's from watching Casey for the past couple of years, and the Peters, and the Cody's, and Sarah Dietschy, and Robert Blake. You know, I, I can go on and on. But different people have different styles of editing, and I had to figure that out. Uh, and I was depressed for a while because I didn't think my vlogs looked good, really, at all. And it wasn't until recently when I thought about my vlog. <laughs> if y'all don't know this, I'm a, I'm a drummer. I'm a musician as well, Okay. And we have a little saying when we're writing songs. It says, dude, as long as the beginning is awesome and how you end the song is awesome, everything in between is just words. <laughs> Which you still want a great in between, obviously. But the point is, the beginning and the end are the most important. So vlogs, I kind of started looking at it like a song. I need my intro to be awesome. I need my exit to be awesome. And in, in the middle, I just need to make sure I'm cutting the fat and I'm getting to the point and I'm not boring you to death. So you're allowing yourself to see the ending <laughs> that I love so much. Um, what else can I show you? Hold on. Is this me or Frank? This is me. All right, remember I told you about that little bitty LED? Oh, check this out. Look how bright the moon was. This was nighttime, on the roof, at a building, private party. It's black. It is dark. I mean, there is, and the reason why is there's no lights by me. I mean, it is dark. I would have loved to have done this shot. Where is it? Um, with a tripod, ISO 100 drag it at f16 for 30 seconds that looks like a glossy print you won't see the grain because you're at 100 instead of whatever i was shooting at so their outfits so looks everything from the band this is their lighting so i my light is off this is strictly the, the stage lighting um love this guitar drummers in the background and he was giving me something cool um, la -di -da, la -di -da. I love images with negative space love 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 This image, it looks like a flash, right? That is just that credit card size LED on my camera. That's all it is. Boom. That's what impressed me. When I, when I got home and these things were looking like I had a flash on my camera, I was like, I need to work with this more. Like, I need to play. Like, what can I do? Do I need a bigger light source, like a bigger panel, so I could shoot at a faster shutter? It's like you, you start learning these things. 
about your equipment. But the darker your scenario is, that little light is actually very bright. It's when you're dealing with more background light that you need a brighter light to overcompensate for what you're actually working in. If that makes any sense. I'm sorry if I lost anybody. Um, let me show you something kind of cool. Okay. I love these. So this, this was my last video. This is the old church converted into a music recording studio. Everything is handheld. That, that's awesome. I love this. This is probably my favorite shot. That's just bad to the bone, man. That's work. He's working. This is rocking Doopsy. Look at this board. God. Hey, Sonny. You sh if, if, if Sonny Greenwich, he's not on this live stream because he's in Ireland. But if you see this live stream later, let me know how much a board like this kind of costs. Not that I, I don't want one. I'm just curious what these things cost. I'm assuming a good 100000 <laughs> or, or a tad. These things were monsters, man. Uh, I love that shot. I love this shot. I'm trying to find something cool to show y'all. I mean, I got a, a bunch of jobs we just did. This shot's cool. All right, I'll leave it on this for a second. If you've seen this in my last couple of vlogs ago, then you already know this story. But if you haven't, then this is new. This is two Canon speed lights on the same little bar that is on top of my tri of my stand, right? So there are two speed lights on full power, radio slaved off my camera. Because I knew those, you need to match hard light with hard light to make it look natural and work. And I can't get my cursor back. So I am right outside the frame about here. Cause I am kind of coming on an angle. I'm not coming straight across. Um, are those hard light sources? And that enabled me to have a very, sm a very, a much smaller f-stop and I can crank, that was on high speed sync as well. So I can be at a 500th, and the reason why is because your f-stop works with your flash power. Your ambient light works off of your shutter speed. It does off your, your f-stop too. I know you know that. But if you get your f-stop and you have a flash that's not high-speed sync and you can't go more than 125, you're, you got to get that flash kind of close to them. So you can try to get an f8 or an f11, so you're not blowing the, the kit out, you know, and that'll help. But sometimes if your background is brighter than that, you need to raise your shutter up to bring down that sunlight exposure. But you can't do that if you're not working with a high-speed sync flash. So if you ever had a question about high-speed sync flash, now you know. Hey, hey, hey. If you're still here, let me know. I'm gonna get off in a little bit. The quarter to four. I'm gonna get off in a little bit and uh, let me text my client actually. And Jamie. Hey buddy, just give me a heads up when you headed this way so I can be ready for you. All right, don't you love texting? It's Fat Albert. <laughs> yes! I'm so proud of you, Tim C. Uh, what else I want to show you? Okay, California. That's where I just came from. That's the vineyard. Good old never rained sunny California. 
San Diego, it rained. <laughs> For us, it rained. The venue is like, this is weird. We never get rain here. <laughs> I'm like, well, here it is. It was misting right there. Wait, can you see it in, in, in the darks? Look, it's rain. See it? Little streaks. <laughs> so this is a soft... It's the softest light you're ever going to have outside is when everything is overcast and cloudy, but you have enough light to be, have a good exposure. This looks like a softbox. Beautiful. And this, if you didn't catch my live stream the other day, quick little 10-second info story that I, I try to do. A lot of times when you go in, even fancy hotels downtown, to photograph them getting dressed, you have a client getting dressed, whatever it is that you have to do. A lot of times the carpet and the drapes on the windows are ugly. Um, the big black flat screen TVs in the background, it's like, what do you do? It's like, what if it's raining outside? You can't go outside. You have to shoot in this room. Well, we photographers have to learn how to make something from nothing sometimes. Now, this, this was her apartment. Her apartment was, was pretty, but she had a lot of girls in it. It was stuff everywhere. I was having a really hard time thinking of where to go. Like, there really was nowhere to go. And it was starting to rain outside, so it's like, you got to be kidding me. Um, so there was this little section of a, of a blank wall. Now, with my cursor, if you can follow me, literally right here is a light pole. Literally right here is where her... Um, fireplace mantle slash TV begins. I think TV. But this little piece of wall is, is all I had with nothing on it. It was wonderful. If I was in a hotel room, we try to take paintings and pictures down so we can have a blank space to work with. Sometimes wherever the color is, it's still better as a solid color than dealing with distracting things in the background that are just terrible. This looks great. This looks like a studio shot. And believe it or not, this is just window light. The window is over here to the right-hand side, coming across, and that's it. Did I help anybody on that one? <laughs> so look, in the near future, um, I'm going to be doing some Facebook Lives on the group page, if I can get it on, on the group page. Because it'll be in real time, it won't be like this where it's crazy delayed. Um, so if you're on the Focus with GK group page on Facebook, you'll see me do a post saying, hey, on Thursday or Friday at this time, I'm gonna do a live stream. Hope to see y'all here. And uh, I believe the live stream on Facebook, we can you can still post your images in the comments and stuff, which, which would be fantastic, actually. Stuart, I'm so glad you're here, man. Thanks for being here for so long. I got to bounce now. Thanks for all the info. Keep doing. And when things aren't going your way, keep plugging through. I work in TV, really, and things go wrong all the time. I learn a lot. <laughs> I hear you, man. You know, it's, it's, it really is true from what they say. It's not how good you are. It's how good you recover from your accidents or mistakes or flaws. That's what makes you a pro eventually. Thanks for being here, Stuart. I appreciate you, bud. Uh, Tim C., I'm going to bounce in a few myself. Do you, sir, have any burning questions you may have for me? Because I'm going to go get ready for this dude. You're good. Awesome. All right. So look, it's uh, wow. So we're, we're right at maybe an hour on the live stream, which this will be saved because there's a lot of good info that we went over and we I like to bounce around. I don't stick to one topic. So anybody just getting on the live stream and fast forwarding to the end, rewind 
and uh, there's definitely some good info things in here. Um, the best thing you can do for me, boys and girls, is go to the Facebook group page, um, join, because you can. All of our subscribers are over there. The people in the group are wonderful, very easy layback, and I would love to hear from people what you would like to see in a video or a live stream so I can kind of like prepare a schedule for myself. Um, so instead of me randomly coming up with ideas, I would love it if I got some ideas from y'all. Um, and look, nothing is too simple. Nothing is too um, in-depth, uh, technical, you know? So particularly when I might do flash photography. Okay, when you say that, do you mean flash on the camera? I'm assuming that's what you mean. And what are you shooting? What are you photographing that you normally have an issue with? Because honestly, there's nothing worse than the flash on the camera and trying to get pretty beautiful light out of it. It's hard. That's why we use a diffuser of some sort on the top. That's why we try to bounce. You can't always bounce. You know, it's, it's frustrating with the, fl with the flash on the camera. Um, how do you use your flash? You're saying my photography is different than, than what you do. I kind of, I use everything though. I mean, I do as much natural light as I can. And then if I have to use three flashes, I know how to do that. Uh, depending on the look or the client that I have, that's how the light kind of gets used. But um, how do you use the flash? Just so I can kind of get a, a gist of what, you, what, what you're meaning. Let me take a sip of my Diet Coke here. Oh, okay, so you're saying I don't do much flash photography of any kind. Okay. Well, help me out here. I'm trying to, I'm trying to understand your, your, your words a little bit. Um, you don't do like, like what I do. I mean, I do 90%. Oh, wildlife and outdoors. Oh, God, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. Tim C., you're Alpha? I forget the usernames. You're Alpha, aren't you? Uh, alpha 6. I was just showing... Somebody in California who loves to shoot outside stuff, and he was proud of the images he was showing me, and a lot of them were not razor sharp. He was trying to figure out, um, he was trying to figure out how to get them better, and I was like, man, you gotta see my buddy Alpha Six on Instagram. You gotta go follow him. I said his work is absolutely ridiculously amazing. It's so damn good. I had to do a video with him as an interview because. They're just that good. And I showed him, and, and he, his eyes kind of went up a little bit when he saw how many great shots you had. Um, lately, have you been doing macro? Because I've, I've noticed a lot of your smaller animals, your smaller bugs that you're getting. Is that macro, or is that just you zoom and you crop it? And look, anybody watching this live stream by now, um, if, if you don't know who Tim C. is, Go look at his work on Instagram. He just put his username, ALPA6C. Go follow this guy. Even if you don't shoot this kind of stuff, you can appreciate it from a photographer's point of view. Um, yes, meaning macro, or yes, meaning zoom in. Ah, the 80 millimeter macro. Nice. You put that sucker on a tripod and just remote shooting it somehow? Well, you're just standing there patiently waiting for the bug to be in position. Because <laughs> I, I know it's a lot of patience, man. I still think you need to do a video on what you do, man. Seriously. It could be the only video on your YouTube channel. You just need to make one. And I apologize for forgetting um, your username on both. All handheld. You see? High five, my brother. High five. Crack open the cold beer. It is Miller time for you. You see? That's what impresses me about you. I know you don't consider yourself a pro just because you're not charging for your work. Um, no, you don't do this for a living doesn't mean you're not pretty damn good. And you, sir, are absolutely that. I'm serious. You, you make me want to go 
outside and look for dragonflies again, which I love to do on my days off. I do. I just I haven't shot for myself in a while, and I'm getting a little um, itchy because I want to do it. I need a day of no client work and just, I don't know, drive around, walk around. I want to go to the country. I want to go somewhere pretty and just get lost on purpose. <laughs> Someday I should purchase a good tripod. Uh, thanks for the kind words. Man, look, well-deserved, my friend, well-deserved. Uh, get a cheap tripod. Who are you kidding? Maybe maybe you should text me your address, and I'll uh, I'll mail you a tripod. How's that? Maybe I'll see if I can do a review for somebody on a tripod. Unless it's really expensive and I'm dying to have it. Actually, that's okay. If I'm dying to have it, then I'll just mail you the one that I'm using <laughs> and keep the high-end one that I can do a, a review for. Um, yeah, there is ample places for wildlife. And, and, and Yeah, I need, to, I need to do my homework and just go figure out where to get interesting, interesting wildlife and not just a handful of bugs here and there. Like, where can I really go? There's some bald eagles around here that are nesting around the levee and stuff. I would love to go find one of those. All right, I don't know what else to pull up because now I'm, um, I'm just reaching. I mean, this, this is all fun stuff, it's great stuff, it's cute stuff. It's it's all right. All right, I'm going to split. Tim C., thanks for being here. Stuart, uh, I'm not sure if anybody else was here earlier. Uh, if they were, I forget. No, it's just you guys. Must be a time of day. People at work. All right, you boys and girls. I'm going to split.